New York is really the city of towers, and it has been since the late 19th century. And every era of skyscraper cycles of construction has added to the skyline. Each era of design and economic cycle produced an image on the skyline. The tall buildings in New York used to be office buildings, and those were very monolithic structures, post-war typically, big floor plates, 30,000 foot floor plates, and very blocky. Um, today, the trend is towards residential buildings, which by their nature have much smaller floor plates. So you're seeing buildings that are smaller in floor plate and taller, but I think it's actually a throwback to the old romantic New York skyscrapers, which were office but had smaller floor plates. Land is very expensive in New York, and if you're going to build something, you should build as high as you can to get the most out of your land. There is not too much space where to put new buildings, so if there is a space, it's a little space, so the only direction that you can go freely is in height. There is an interest and in the people to live in height. They are willing to pay, the developers are willing to build for them, and on top of it is not space. So all these factors makes the tall buildings in New York in particular very attractive. Since 1961, New York has had a zoning law that really constrained the amount of building that could be put on any lot. Zoning in New York is very complex. Um, there are a number of different controls that govern where the building is sited, how far it sets back, how much floor area you're allowed within, so zoning is very intricate. But there's a feature of the law that allows for the transfer of air rights that could be piled up on top of another tower. Putting together that creates an envelope that allows for this spectacular new set of buildings, the super slender ultra luxury towers. The zoning doesn't really exist in very many places in the city to be able to build these super tall buildings and economically it would make no sense to build them because the market wouldn't pay enough to cover the hard costs if you did it without, say, a Central Park view. And that's why we're building tall to capture that view. And history has shown that New Yorkers are willing to pay for that view. That's what sells the space. And then you walk in, and you see these big square glass windows that are 10, 10 and a half feet you know, in dimension. It's beautiful. Slender in engineering terms is measured by height divided by width. Anything above a ratio of one to seven will be considered a slender building. As the material has improved through the years and construction techniques have also improved, you have seen this ratio exceeding 15 or almost 20. Along the Central Park corridor, where people are really willing to pay a premium for that park view, it's really the only place that these super tall buildings right now are economically viable. Every single building is different. Every single one has its own characteristics. And every single building we have to go from scratch and to create a new one. There are no repetitions. Working with the structural engineer from day one was critical. It's a chicken or egg. You have to have a layout that works and a building that works, but you also have to have a structure that works. So finding that efficient balance between those elements was really critical to do at the very beginning. In terms of technology, the sky's the limit. But in terms of political forces, economic forces, the ability to find land, create these large assemblages, have the appropriate zoning to build these large structures, I think those are going to be the impediments to really pushing the envelope further. This new type is really a new type in skyscraper history. These new super slender residential towers really do represent a new typology that is characteristic specifically of New York and a new growth of construction in the 21st century with a form that historians 100 years from now will see as distinctive of this moment in time. When you come look at New York in five, ten years from now, it's going to look like a completely different city with all the stuff that's planned. We're happy to see the super high rise developments, both commercial and residential, come back to where everything started, and that's in New York.